available on our website. Um, as far as what it is we currently permit, um, how much we charge for it, and um, I think it's useful information to have as well as um, how a perfect permit works, essentially, uh, which is very rare, unfortunately, but um, it's sort of a step-by-step -step as far as how I go about my process. Uh, on the first page, you'll see um, basically the schedule of when everything is permitted, how it's broken down, um, and this was uh, redone in August uh, as far as the season span. Um, each area is treated a little differently. That's to sort of one, spread out my workload, um, and two, it just makes sense with how uh, different schedules work for different, different uses. Uh, but basically, you know, all permits are, all applications are evaluated. Um, residents are given sort of first dibs on things. Um, and the name of the game with this is compromise. It's very rare that everyone is completely satisfied with what they get, um, but it's sort of a, a puzzle that gets put together as far as maximizing spaces and usage, and um, it just really depends on the demand. And at this point, let, let us put aside the um, Manchester Theater. What we what we've sort of suggested to the board is that with the cultural center, the size of the permitted space, if it's 340 to 620 square feet, which is a smaller room, with a small room, it is $30 an hour for resident pay, $60 an hour for non-resident pay. If it's a 620 to 1,030 square feet, it would be $40 an hour for residents, $80 for non-residents. Um, for 1,030 plus square feet, it's $50 an hour for residents, $100 an hour for non-residents. Now, if anybody is the fair and unequitable, which it is the non-residents, but that's the way it goes. Um, there is going to be storage. We have not set any fees for storage yet because we don't know what the storage, the storage is needed. It is going to be associated with the needs of the particular groups that are going to use any long-term um, area, or they, 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 they're permitting for a lot, so that will have um, storage space. The garden center, uh, the garden club, is very used to this arrangement mm -hmm. because they have storage and and it's paid for and it's used for the um, garden club and not for anybody who wants storage. Um, what we need to do as a community, and this is aside from Main Street Theater, and I'm talking about Main Street Theater right now, uh, what we want to do with the other groups that want to use the um, Good Shepherd or other cultural center is we're really going to, as Donna said, we're really going to sit at the table and hash it out because there's a certain number of rooms, there's a lot of pe people who want it, and let's try it that way and act as a community and see how we can get along with each other and work it out. If not, then we have a lot of system. I mean, there are many ways of doing this because people want to use it. These are residents of the island, but I think and maybe wrongly so, but I think and I hope that we can sit down and work it out that everybody is, well, when I was doing contracts, it's like when you do a contract, everybody is a, a little unhappy. And that's how it goes. And then you know you have a fair deal. So, <laughs> it is a community, Sherry, and as a community, we have to sit down. And I am not going to sit there, and neither the board, neither, are going to make one group happy in the community as opposed to another group in 
the community that is very unhappy. And if you can figure out a better way to make everybody happy, then you have solved world peace. <laughs> Very, very rarely. It's, we always come up with something. I mean, whether it's a change in the date, I mean, a change in the time. When I look at this square footage, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I do have a problem with the rates for the residents. I think they should be lower. So how do we get that? Well, you suggest, I would suggest half of all that. That, that. That's a very low rate. I don't think we would be meeting our fiduciary duty at that level, I could believe we can drop it a bit. How low can we get it without all of the And we do $5 off each. Sorry? $5 off each. $5 off each of them? Not in, in the aggregate, $5 an hour. Okay, so I wanted half. You wanted five. Can we meet in the middle and take 10 bucks? No, I wanted bucks. There we go. Sorry, that was my negotiation. I I I just, it just, yeah. just I mean, these rates weren't arbitrarily set. They were they were established to be consistent with rates that are already being set. Right. So this it's is the set of rates. Yeah. Right. But I'd like to own those too. So so whatever decisions are made is ultimately going to affect the overall rate structure. Okay. None of those, whatever is collected in fees, does not approach the cost of maintaining the space. Not even close. So yeah, but I'm okay with that because. <laughs> Basically, the cost of maintaining the space that falls back on us it still falls back on the community that has given us that money anyway. So no matter how you look at it, the community is paying for it. And if we can lower it here and bring it up, uh, you know, make it up through the ground rent or whatever, it's still the community paying for it, but it's not as much of a burden on the nonprofit. So I like us to get it as low as we possibly can. It's not only the nonprofits that are, are using. Well, I have any problems with the profit ones. I'm talking about the nonprofit. What we can do, I like it. Okay, what we can do is different rates for not profits and profits. I'm fine with that. Okay. Right. How do you define a non-profit? Somebody who has a 501c corporation. They need a certificate. You can't say, that, um, well, right. I'm not making any money on it yet. You need the 501c. Okay. So, speaking practically, these organizations would pre register with Donna as 501c. Which is typical of the I, I require free. Okay. And then they would enjoy uh, especially reduced So rate. they'd be three rates. They'd be resident nonprofits, resident profits, and non resident sky solar. So the only issue that I can see arising with that is if you have um, a birthday party. Okay. They are technically not, you know, for content, but they don't even have an no, they they have. So they get charged the resident. So it's a resident rate and a resident nonprofit. I mean, that's my opinion. I'm not even on the real estate committee, so I think that's you guys. I'd like to make a recommendation on maybe a sliding scale. I know that, for instance, there's one group that's going to want to use the space for 30 consecutive days from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., and that month will be a very large burden. But other months, maybe they'll use it less periodically. So I don't know if you do it monthly or quarterly of a sliding scale. That means if you're going to get like, 10 hours at this rate, if you're getting bulk, if you're buying bulk, so from 0 to 10 at this, 10 to 20 is at that, 20 to 30 is at that. Like this, it shouldn't be if uh, there is a community that's using a space, so it should be enough that, that for, to, to justify the fiduciary responsibility. But on the other hand, to, that it shouldn't be overburdening you know, if for 300 hours in a month, whatever number you put at, it, it adds up to a lot. You know, uh, so the more you, the more you use, the less you pay. Yeah, the more you use, the less you pay, which is kind of that in mean. business. Well, I don't, I don't know the rules, but in business, it was very common to is bulk rates, or and that's just a recommendation. Yeah, I, I I understand, but it is it is not a viable recommendation because you can, you know, it's just, it, it, to have it cheaper the more you use, 
then you're not you're going to limit the space for people who use it less. And, and I don't like it. If I may, a lot of times requests change, so they could start out at one rate and then move to a different one, and that would it, it, it's not nice. tenable. It, the the not-for-profit and and the resident we can accommodate because it's something very tangible. And it's also consistent with the Yes. Um, may I ask one question uh, relative to the, uh, the uh, rate schedule, I'll call it. Um, oftentimes, at least I've seen when uh, rates are variable in the context of, we're talking three groups here, but how do you, uh, how do you assign priorities in the sense of uh, if there's a certain demand upon facility A and facility B, and you have a resident as opposed to a non-resident, do you have a priority scheme for, uh, for, for um, a lot, uh, allowing use of that uh, space to residents, for example, over non-residents? There are a lot of different factors that go into scheduling. Um, when applications are received is one of them. Um, where you live is one of them as well. Um, the amount of time that you want, the times that you want. Um, if there are, it's, it's a very sort of um, amorphous, really hard to get in. We will not dump residents. Right. But we, if someone comes in and pays to the day, we really can't dump them. The, it, it's going to be obvious that residents are made a priority. There's no doubt about it. But that's not to say, and, and as one of the things that come up very much, that we're going to bump a non-resident who has paid for a day because a resident has decided they want to use the same room. I mean, that, that's contractually, you know, you just can't do that. So I would say it's, it's an art, not a science. That's a very good way. And Donna has been doing this kind of scheduling with less facilities available <coughs> for quite a while now. So what we're proposing, I think, is to continue to handle the scheduling in the same way that Donna has been scheduling. And as she said earlier in response to Marty's question, there have not been many instances where somebody wasn't, a, we weren't able to accommodate them. If it turns out, as Shirley was saying earlier, if it turns out that this scheduling process doesn't continue to work for some reason, then we can revisit the right. If we have a lot of people who are outside, we can double their rate. That would less than <laughs> And what I do, and I think what you do with the bond deals, and you correct me if I'm mistaken, is when the scheduling, let's say, opens up, we're going to schedule for the first mm -hmm. quarter, the, there's a time frame there where residents get to schedule first, and then right. after that, then the non residents right. get. Right. So they've typically given that priority already, which I think what, is what you get in that day, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what yeah, I'm sure. That's sort of what I wanted yeah, to do now. exactly wanted to talk about right. because um, the way that I accept the applications, it's enough time in advance before the reservations are actually scheduled to start that it allows for you know time to sort of address those issues if there's conflict to try to come up with creative solutions. Mm -hmm. It's not two days before you're requesting the space. And there and granted there are times when there will be daily uses or last minute things, and that's fine, we make that work. But for the bulk Larger scheduling, it's done far enough in advance that you're sort of able to foresee issues. I would think as a rule, um, if I'm hearing you correctly, and I, and I hope it's you can within your um, your rights as a PBC do it, do it this way, given your mission on the island, that you can give uh, the indigenous, the, res the residents a heads up. <laughs> um, uh, some lead time that will allow them to get in the queue appropriately. Well, I mean, when we do the initial long term, you know, uh, uh, when you want both for, for a period of time, that's the residents. You know, I'm really talking, the non residents are going to be really day to day. It's not going to be all violent groups coming in and meeting here. Yes. Uh, because I'm, I'm sensitive uh, in part because of my experience when I was coaching soccer on the island. 
and um, we did we redid the nice fuel and so forth. But it, but it, uh, it, it I assume it generated res uh, revenue, some revenue. But I felt it was at the expense of the Ivan kids um, who needed fuel time and so forth. And we often couldn't get that fuel time because the fuel was rented out. Has, has that improved? Well, um, I haven't been in soccer now for two years, so I would have to consult with Well, the, it, it's with, not with, been well. With, 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 with so you have the local um, youth organizations actually have priority over everyone. I, I don't do any scheduling until I get their request. So um, they are number one, I can assure you. That I'm speaking practically. Uh, and I, I'm sure that's your goal, and I hope that's the case, and I'm not arguing against you, I'm, I, but I will assure you that happened in the past. There could be instances where requests are changed or added after the schedule were already done. Um, and in that case, my hands are a little bit more tied. Um, but I can assure you that for as long as I've been here, uh, the youth center and the local schools, uh, they get, nobody gets to pick anything before they do. Uh, uh, same thing I'm not, I'm sorry. Hey, uh, I'm not I'm not miss, uh, identifying speakers, that was David Evans, uh, uh, Lynn Shinazaki, and then... Um, what I wanted to address was some of the timing issues. Um, organizations from Moss Island that come onto Island, that they're profit-making, they're organized, they plan their schedules way in advance, you know, they probably plan things a year out. One of the things that has happened with the nonprofit organizations, which tend to be driven by with full volunteers, maybe not um, they don't have two and three year schedules in terms of how they're planning their events and what they're doing. And so I think that that's been a piece of what's created some of the scheduling issues. And what I'm wondering may be helpful is on a quarterly basis, prior to any any project being locked in, um, someone can be come to one of the Euro meetings and say, um, our scheduling deadline, if you want to get in to do a field or you want to or you want to have an opportunity to use this venue or this space, then here is when you need to get us information by. We, we can send that okay. informational some kind of communication. We can, we can send that informational out, but that's not a problem, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I probably do. Yeah. I I I'm more than happy to do so. I mean, I personally am more than I'm happy. I'm just trying to think of ways of Yeah, no, that, that, that's definitely a very good suggestion. And, and we'll do it if we have not done it before. We'll do it even with more. Because I, I think that that kind of thing will help when if we have a, a more conscious idea of when the schedulers come in. Because I know I've, I've attempted to get spaces only to find out, oh, that was scheduled three months ago. And, and we're what not it, I don't think we have too many off-island people. So, so, you know, it's just... Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But just oh. guessing here. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, you know, so what I'm saying is it's helping us, yeah. you know, kind of coordinate, because sometimes we can't plan for the three Yeah, years. and that's, and we took this suggestion to put over the race here.
but it seemed too much of a financial burden for that. So we now have it under three month uh, um, intervals that you pay for three months, then you have it rolling, and that will continue. So it, it, it's as long as it's you know paid for. And the reason you know the payment also does something that you can't book that you can't book for a period of time and then just say, oh no, I'd rather not. And you really sort of had another group not be able to use the space. So that's why you really want something there that is real and that you have a vested interest in rather than just booking and then saying, oh no, I'd rather not. So it can't be like calling up for a uh, for, for a dinner at some place. It just can't be like that because it's too easily it can be canceled and then one group or another will be it just doesn't work. Thank you. 
but you have to respect the people who've been there. Sure. Now, with the cultural center, it's sort of like a new day. So we have to sit down and like, you know, there may be groups that have Easter, may have groups from and that, whatever times you tell us, you know, in general, and then we'll have a schedule so that you can so lock in. Yeah. And so there's a the concept idea of, of where there might be conflicts. And at that point, if there are, then then we have to revisit the process. So uh, a group could possibly pass an interest eight months out, a year out. Absolutely. Interest, yes. Interest. Yeah. 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 And, and then you to pay for. See, our problem is we can't rent out the room. We can't rent out religious, you know, again, what, what we do is we rent out the room to the not-for-profit that's right they have the They do, of course they do. Uh, but we recognize that it is needed in certain times. But just but, certain people will plan to have a dollar. Right. And they'll be there six months ahead, they'll be planning it back right. to set adaptations and all this. Yeah, no, and that's, not, that's not going to be a, a big okay. We're talking about, you know, just used at 10 o'clock every morning, yep. but the special things, you know, then they, they can book. Okay. I mean, we could do it another way and just like sort of say, okay guys, <laughs> it's, it's a free for all. <laughs> you can do that, and whoever comes first yeah, no, gets it. Gets it. And, 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 and that's something we really don't want to do. We want to work with all of you so that everybody is a little bit happy. <laughs> and I, I, I do think that the first year, the first full year, is going to be interesting, a little bit more of a challenge. Um, but once we get through a full year and see what the requests are, and we compromise and all work together, it will get smoother, even with the addition of new groups. I mean, if we can get through the first year and really see how this gets rolling, I think we can be in good shape. We really need to do it together. that you don't have to you don't have to try to figure that one of these some group is going to ship you as you know by by making a reservation and not showing up. So you could you could say you know take a risk and let groups let groups try try to well there's two things let, let groups go as far out as they need to to secure the space and the other thing is the, there are not for profit organizations, but there are you know, 501c groups on the island, but there are also groups that are that are fledgling, for instance, the CERT team, which has been fledgling for about 10 years, and they don't have a 501 status yet, and other groups as well that really don't have any money whatsoever, volunteer organizations or a club, um, they should be in the same category as a 501c group, even though they are not, even, you know, even though they can't produce a certificate. So otherwise, there's no way that the new groups can start to conform. Uh, there's a resident group. Well, just, just, just to speak to that, uh, if, a, if a group that doesn't have a certificate is doing fundraising, it's very common for that group to work under the umbrella of a stable and existing uh, not-for-profit group. And that not-for-profit group, if its charter is, is broad enough, can act as a pass-through entity. There, there's some, uh, some entities set up that way in, in, in New York uh, now. Uh, so I imagine these small groups could partner with other organizations in order to enjoy that organization's uh, co-sponsorship of events, if, if, that's, if that's useful to them, and if it's useful to the, uh, the not-for-profit organization. Uh, for, I think first, Linda and the director. I, 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 now that we're at a place where everyone is a little unhappy and a little happy, um, I'm going to kind of kick the hornet's nest, and I want to ask about some of the other properties that are within your purview, and whether they're being addressed in the same manner, like 
the dates from the church faith? That's not ours. That's not ours. That's not yours. No. It's Hudson related, and they pay rent to Hudson related. Okay, so that, that, that property is within the Hudson related yes. area. That's not me. No. Okay. And then there's some space over at Sports Park. I think that there's a couple of groups that use space over there, but it hasn't really been open to all groups that I know of. So how, how are we going to well, deal sport, with Well, Sports them? Park is in the permit. Yeah, which space? Uh, Where there's some art stuff going on? Well, that's interesting. Uh, when Sports Park is refurbished, those spaces will be used. Okay, that, that was, I, I was taking the harness nuts. that we're talking about all of these spaces. That space has not been made available to any other group ever. So I, I think if we're, we're going to readdress this okay, space. Okay, back to it. Sports Park has a lot of very inefficient use of space, if you've been down there. Right. It has these immense locker rooms. I don't know why. It has uh, the mezzanine, uh, which is, in my opinion, underutilized. And so when all this work is being done down there, it would be done with an eye to making uh, space more useful to the community. Well, and I think that's the kind of thing that people need to hear, too. Because if you're going to start readdressing and maybe creating some more additional space that people may be able to use, that's good news. I mean, that's something that's good Absolutely. to hear. Well, keep in mind that not counting that space, we now have 10 spaces in, the, in, in this little area by itself. Seven here, three over in Good Shepherd. So, you know, we're, groups should be accommodated. Uh, that's what I just was going to say. Is there conflicts? That means people submitted their schedules. Are there large conflicts of questions in space? Schedules haven't been submitted yet. Oh, please do. Why don't we? Why don't we see if there's even a problem? Maybe, that, there's, that's what we're right. Maybe there's sufficient space for enough <laughs> people to get their schedule, and the question will boil down to half a dozen or a dozen times. From easier. your lips to God's ears. No, <laughs> let's, let's see what we have. Let, let's plan a year ahead. A year, you know, let's let's see let's see where the conflicts are. And let's Absolutely. take it from there. Now we're talking, what happens if? What happens if we, if we may just have enough space? Maybe you'll have to move to this space instead of that space, or this it, space instead of that exactly. space. Exactly. Let's go. And, and that was exactly my point. I think this is something that we have not often because we haven't run into those problems in the past. I don't think we will now. Uh, yeah, you create. You just created a new category for resident nonprofits. What's the proposed rate for that category? No, no, but but well, it's down fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, well, this is this question down here. Put more on the others. But that, that means like Good Shepherd and. Yeah. Good, Good Shepherd, which is in a different category of space, and needs to be monitored. Where, you know, here we are in the basement with not so great access compared to Good Shepherd. I think there's a distinction, and I think especially for this year, where we're, we're, we're trying out something together. I just want to go subterranean on the great basement again. Well, you have to. Can we look at the numbers again? Yes. Right. And, and, we have, yeah. and, and there will be a reduction, a good reduction, but okay. we need to look at the numbers because we also have the maintenance and, you know, since doing this... It I'm not good. saying the total should come out different. I'm saying it's higher for the non-residents. Well, yeah, but we don't, don't have those. So we don't have well, it'll, it'll be a real reduction. Yeah. How much does this just to keep the space with lights and utilities. About how much is it right now? Stay clean. Well, what, yeah, what, the, what we had looked at was actually the, the cost of operating on the basis, but which also included a, a recognition of capital. And that's up between 18 and, and uh, 20, 20,000. Come on. Come on. Here, the space are all. The, all. The, all. Oh. But, but again, the benefit, it's coming, it's coming, it's 
coming out of the so not, I, That's why I have no real problem yeah. making the non-resident rate really high because but, the residents well, are, but, but then you will get the non-resident. Sorry? But then you won't get any non-residents. So you okay. can't necessarily make it up that way. I just want to make sure that we look at the pricing in the context of our overall pricing and make sure that it's fair and equitable. But I, my, my, my whole point is we can't lose money because no matter what happens, the residents are paying for it. <coughs> Whether it's the nonprofit groups or the, or the for-profit groups, if they're residents, they've already paid for it. So whether we're making it up out of the pot of money to ground rent or we're making it up to the organizations, it's still coming from but the residents. That, that is, that is one perspective. There's yeah. another perspective, which is all the money that's paid in ground rent is actually due and owed to the state because of the investment in the infrastructure of the island. Yeah, that's so a I different think. perspective. Yeah. 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 But there is another perspective. <laughs> Excuse me, I'd like to add something to your perspective. We all pay state taxes. How much do we get back into the community mm -hmm. from our state taxes? <laughs> what do we get from the state? I don't think that that... Yes, it does count because I pay state taxes. So do I. Yes, so but you live somewhere else but in your community. Your community gets some support from the state. We get nothing. We get but this much. Really and and that's why our ground rents that we pay are paid into the whole of the state. That's what we got with the infrastructure. It's a separate discussion. We pay into whatever well, is well, in the state. Well, look, it sounds like a job for the audit committee. So, uh, we, we've discussed these rates, we've talked about how they're available, we've uh, made ourselves available to the community in this forum, and we continue to be available. This is kind of bringing to a close, gradually, discussions that began three years ago, uh, when, when I first became chair of the Real Estate Development Advisory Committee, before the cultural center was taken to our out of service. There was the issue then that new groups had come forward and wanted to get more treatment. And I hope that we've gone in a slow in a slow manner perhaps, but we've gone in a way that can get those groups what they need to function in our community. Yes? Um, um, I want to thank the board for moving forward and renovating the cultural center. Um, I walked through it and it definitely looks fabulous. I just want to um, get clarification about the issue of why the Main Street Theater is being treated differently than all the other organizations, the nonprofit organizations who are living on the island. Uh, you've mentioned that you've sent out um, um, invitations by email to 20 organizations, and uh, we're part of BRIC, and BRIC has more than 30 organizations, to my knowledge, 35 organizations. So, uh, if, can you please clarify wh why the Main Street Theater is getting, is different? Yes. And, and that's, that's our next agenda, in fact. Okay. 